With this, we wrap up this course, Java 8 Lambda Basics. And I'm going to call back the first set of slides that we had in the first video where I talked about why lambdas. I'd given a bunch of points which really didn't make a lot of sense unless you really knew, knew what was going on. But hopefully now, after going through this course, these list of items should make sense. First of all, Lambda enables functional programming. We've already seen that in action in multiple different places. You think of functions as entities that get passed around. And that's the fundamental concept behind functional programming. You think of functions as entities. Uh, you have readable and concise code. We've already seen that. We've seen how verbose the anonymous inner class is and how Lambda makes it really concise and more readable. Easier to use APIs and libraries. Uh, we have the example of the collection API, and as more and more libraries use lambdas in order to enable this functional programming model, you can have better APIs when compared to the old uh, Java 7 way of doing things where you had to have a class or an object in order to pass behavior to any particular library. And finally, we've seen support for parallel processing. Uh, we've just looked at that in the previous video. We've seen how collections can be made to go through a parallel stream, and this could potentially leverage uh, parallel processing depending on the processor in which the you know the JVM is running. All right, so we are going to go back to the things that we said we're going to cover in this course. And again, hopefully, all these should make sense. We've understood what lambdas are. We've actually used them in a couple of situations in sample code. We've looked at functional interfaces, what they are and how to use them. We've looked at method, method references. Again, we've taken an introductory look at them and seen how there are certain usages of lambda expressions that could be converted to method references. There are a few more that you could potentially use. So definitely check out the documentation to look at all these other combinations. And finally, we've looked at improvements to the collection API by using using the stream approach and seeing how you can use functional programming to have these different operations applied to the collections and have the code be more readable and more elegant and uh, also enable parallel processing while doing so. So hopefully this course was helpful. Uh, this has been Java 8 Lambda Basics. Thanks for watching.